For those seeking further in-depth information concerning the Church of Christ movement founded in the early 1800s by Thomas and Alexander Campbell, Barton W. Stone, and Walter Scott, please contact Christian Answers of Austin, Texas. Free newsletters and other information on this subject are available by simply calling or emailing us. Access our online videos on Church of Christ and other Campbellite movements on Yahoo Video. Once on the Yahoo Videos homepage, put Larry Wessels in the search box and click enter. We've got them on the, on the spot here. <laughs> We've got them exposed on television here on their history. We've got their baptism put out here for everyone to see and see the invalidity of Campbell's baptism. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to let him off the hook by him coming up here clawing at us. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got a, a file here I keep in my cults file, but uh, I, I entitled this file Church of Christ Encounters of a Third Kind. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just filled with letters from the Southwest Church of Christ, the East Side, and all these other Church of Christ guys, correspondence and letters going back and forth and relating to all this information and stuff we've been talking about on this show. And uh, I, I just wanted to mention that our, he had originally challenged us and called, talked to Jackson, sent a letter to Jackson. Jackson, you talked to him on the phone. Yes. Uh, we invited him to come and debate you and Dr. Morey. He is very mad at Dr. Morey's presentation. At yeah, on this TV program. Right, on this pr right. television program. And he wouldn't accept that. He would not accept. I sent him a follow-up letter, which he, uh, I, I believe, misrepresented on his TV show. But anyway, if anyone wants copies of these letters, I'll be glad to provide them. But he, uh, he sent a letter to uh, George Williams and here's yeah. what he said, I am pleased at yours and Brother Bennett's efforts in meeting with the Day Spring Evangelism people, and I'm glad you were there to make such response as time would allow. We look forward to seeing the presentation on TV. And then, uh, as he goes on, as I mentioned over the phone, we challenge these for a public debate, and we'll continually press for such. And he goes on, but, but the key is, we offered him twice and to not, come on the TV and meet the people he was opposed to, and, and see, he wouldn't I'm, do it. And see, I'm getting tired of the man. I mean, you can drag on and on and on with these fellows through letters, and he just keeps changing things. He keeps talking about this and, and, and talking about that. And in other words, he just keeps beating around the bush. I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Ross about a word that George Williams brought up during the debate. And the word I believe as he pronounced it was chenegligé. Uh, I might have mispronounced that a little bit. I'm trying to remember what, exactly how I said it, but I think it was chenegligé or something like that. Isn't belief in the Bible sometimes used as a chenegligé? Uh, you may be pronouncing it wrong, but I'm not aware of that word. You aren't? No. Chenegligé. It is a word, a, one, a word that is used to, to represent no, 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 some negligee. You can get on any, any grammar book and look it up, and it, it stands, it is a word that stands for the total process. And I can show you how belief is used in the New Testament in that sense. What is your theological uh, interpretation of this word, of vocabulary definition? Uh, Jackson had a dictionary on one of our earlier shows. So. Well, uh, Brother Morris said something about that being a something somebody maybe a Camelot wore to bed. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, in all, but in all seriousness, I'd have to have Brother Williams to spell that word so I can look it up in the dictionary because I'm not really familiar with what he was trying to um, say there concerning that word. He assured us that he was using a legitimate English word that had meaning, and perhaps he was, because I'm not the best educated person in the world, but I'd have to have it spelled out for me and uh, but uh, at any rate, the context in which he used it didn't prove anything for his case because he was trying to prove, I think, that it was a uh, collective uh, term. The word faith was a collective term that would refer to everything. And he used some passage, I believe, in Acts where it talked about the faith. And of course, there is a sense in which the word the, the faith can refer to the body of Christian truth. But when it says, he that believeth on him is not condemned, it's not talking about he that believeth the whole body of Christian truth is not condemned. He's talking there about the initial conversion experience of believing in Jesus Christ for salvation. 
Okay. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in him. He's not talking about believing everything there is in the Bible from cover to cover. If I had to believe that was essential to salvation, then uh, I'd have to start in Genesis 1 and go all the way to Revelation 22 before I was ever saved, if I had to believe the, the whole faith. Because, and hope there was no misprints. Right, because there was the item of faith that we believe is from Genesis to Revelation. You hear sometimes people say, well, I, I just believe the Bible, all the Bible, nothing but the Bible. Well, now, the, actually, all you believe about the Bible is what you understand, all, mm -hmm. all the, what you know. And I don't know anyone, never met anyone, that knew everything in the Bible. So there's nobody can say, I believe all the Bible. And we can say theoretically, oh, yes, I believe the Bible's the Word of God, and I believe all of it. But in practical life, the only thing we believe that's in the Bible is what we've actually read and understood. Now, that's not saying that neo-orthodoxy is true, which mm -hmm. says it's not the Word of God until you accept it as the Word of God. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that we only actually believe what we know. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, so... This, this reminds me of what uh, Williams had said again and again, not only in uh, the debate but in his other shows, where he held his Bible up and he said, we just believe this book. Right. And if you just believe the Bible, believe what the Bible says about water baptism, believe Acts 2.38, believe that... You, and of course everyone in the debate believed the Bible, but then he makes it a point like you are at odds with the Bible. He takes something like Acts 2.38, but then if I were a Jehovah's Witness, I could say to him, I'm, I'm a Jehovah's Witness, I believe the Bible, and I say you need to believe Colossians 1.15 that Jesus is the firstborn of all creation, and he's not God, he's a created being. Now, of course, I, w I believe Mr. Williams would reject that argument from the Jehovah's Witness, but here's the same line of reasoning. Just quoting a verse and forcing your interpretation into it and then implying that someone that doesn't accept your interpretation of that verse doesn't believe the Bible. Well, you know, their, their statement to the effect that we just believe the Bible, actually what that is saying to you and to me is, from their standpoint, is you don't believe the Bible. We believe the Bible, but you don't believe the Bible. They're like the party at the well, Church of insult. Corinth. Uh, yeah, they're like the party in the Church of Corinth that said, I am yeah. Christ. It, it's, an in, it's an insult. <laughs> Uh, for them to say, well, we just believe the Bible. You, you don't believe the Bible. You believe other things, etc. Let me make a point here about confessions of faith. I can take any Baptist confession of faith extant, and I can take that confession of faith, and I can open it up, and I can read it, and I can show that there's nothing taught in that confession of faith but what the writers of that confession understand to be the teaching of the Bible. In other words, this is not something different from the Bible. It's just a summary in the form of brief statements on certain doctrines. Now, Church of Christ say, well, we ought not to have that. Is it authoritative? Is it binding, etc.? You can go into a Church of Christ church. They'll have a track rack over there. They'll have a bunch of articles in that track rack. In other words, individually, they're going to tell you about this doctrine and that doctrine and that other doctrine. It's no more different. I mean, there's no difference between this and a confession or a statement of faith put out by a Baptist. Well, they say, oh, well, your statement of faith is binding. Well, now, isn't their track binding? You're going to tell me they've got a track up there on Acts 2.38 teaching what they believe, and they're going to tell you that track is not binding if they're teaching the Word of God? The Word of God is binding wherever you find it. Sure. And if the confession of faith has the word of God, sure it's binding. If your gospel track has the word of God, sure it's binding. But they try to make these little dodges to cover up their uh, shenanigans about we don't have creeds, we don't have confessions, we don't have this, that, and the other. Actually, anything you believe, whether you write it, speak it, or think it, it's a creed. Sure. Whatever you believe, that's your creed. If you don't have a creed, then you don't believe anything. Mm -hmm. And your creed is what? Infidelity, I guess. If you would like a free newsletter on this or other subjects, just give us a call at Christian Answers. The phone number is area code 512-218-8022. That's 512-218-8022. Or you could email us at cdebater at AOL.com. That's cdebater at AOL.com.